everybody welcome back to my channel today we are going to be doing a DIY laminated travelers notebook cover we're going to be um, doing a b6 size today uh, you can pretty much do any size really but uh, I did have people say that they would be interested in having me show how I made my um, b6 TN cover um, with one single piece of paper, no cutting the paper or anything, is just one continuous piece. Um, I did see a lot of other um, tutorials on how to make a laminated B6 cover, but all of the ones that I saw were either, well, they were either not laminated or they were in multiple pieces, and that just seemed kind of annoying to me to have to do multiple pieces, so I kind of brainstormed and I came up with a way to do it in just one solid piece and I feel like it's actually um, a lot sturdier than doing it in two pieces for a couple of reasons. One, it is one continuous piece so there's no seams or anything, uh, no way for it to come apart. Um, also, it is basically double laminated. So <clears throat> here is one that I have not punched or put elastics in yet. Um, so this is kind of uh, the cover without doing anything except for laminating it. Um, doing this cover, I did learn a couple things because this is not a double-sided 12x12 sheet. This is actually two sheets and I kind of just stuck them on top of each other and kind of did a little bit of glue roller inside. Um, but I learned some lessons with that. Um, so the supplies you're going to need are one 12 by 12 paper double sided if you don't care um, about the inside having a pattern then it doesn't need to be double sided if you do want the inside to have a pattern as well um, I would suggest a double sided paper but you can use just two um, two 12 by 12 sheets um, I would uh, suggest using a lot of um, dry adhesive. I wouldn't suggest using wet adhesive um, just to minimize the um, rippling, uh, but I would suggest using like a lot of, pretty much try and cover as much of this as you can, otherwise you do get a little bit of, it's not like super bad, but you do get a little bit of bubbling in the paper if you don't use enough adhesive as you can see here on mine, um, but it's really not that big of a deal. So you're going to need a piece of paper, uh, double-sided or not double-sided, whatever you want. You're going to need two um, two laminating pouches, a paper trimmer, uh, something to punch holes, so something that can pu punch it a 1 8 inch hole. I'm going to be using the uh, Big Bite Cropodile. You can also use just, I think, the regular Cropodile. Um, or you can use a 1 8 inch hole punch. You just want to make sure that it's going to be something that is strong enough to be able to punch cleanly through, um, you know, a double laminated piece of cardstock. Um, and you're also going to need some elastic. Uh, the elastic I use, I think I just, this one I just got from probably Joann's or Michael's or something. And then this is some of the Jane Davenport um, elastic, which is um, thicker. This is like the thickness of the elastic that you usually see on um, Traveler's Notebooks, but really either one is fine. This one's like, I don't know, two thirds or half the thickness, but it works just fine. So you're gonna need some elastic and you're going to need um, some scissors to cut the elastic and you're going to either need a scoreboard or a score tool. I don't own a scoreboard but I have a scoring tool and I just score my papers just by using the scoring tool in the indentation uh, like where the blade would go on my paper trimmer. It's a little <laughs> I'm a little strange but it, it gets the job done so it's fine. Uh, you're also going to need a laminator of course. Um, mine is just the cheapy laminator, the scotch one. I got it for like 20 bucks at Walmart so and it works just fine. So the first thing you're going to do is well, get all this stuff out of the way is what you're going to do. Um, you're going to cut down your paper and if you want um, this 
one that I have here has um, four elastics in it. I don't know if you can see. Uh, so it's got four elastics in it, and it's pretty pretty thick. It's taking up pretty much the entire width of the spine with four inserts. Um, if you wanted it to be thicker than this, I think in like Foxy Fix terms, this would be a compact or something. If you want it to be able to hold more, technically you could cram more. You could use um, some jump bands and you could probably get one or two more inserts in here. It'd be really chunky, but you could probably do it, especially if you don't have any of the like decorative things that I have in here. But if you want it to actually hold six strands, um, and you want the actual spine to be thicker than it is, you will probably need to do one of those um, techniques where it uses two pieces. But if you're fine with the four strands, then this is going to work out just fine for you. So um, the reason I say that is because this uh, paper, let me just use this one, this uh, length of the paper right here is 12 inches long, so you pretty much have um, one of those inches is being accommodated for um, in the spine, and then you've got about um, a quarter of an inch leeway on either side for um, keeping a quarter inch, half an inch, something like that to keep all of your inserts protected. So whoop, it is going to be one or 12 inches long and then it is going to be five or seven and a half inches tall so you just figure out what pattern you want to show take it to seven and a half inches and you slice and then on here all I did was I scored halfway so six inches in and then I did half an inch on each side so that would make this five and a half inches scored and the, my first one I made the mistake I made the mistake when I made this one of not scoring it first before I laminated it and you can see there's like some ripples can you see some ripples here because I tried to fold it without scoring it <laughs> after it was double laminated that's don't do that that's not gonna work very well um, so I ended up scoring it after it was laminated which I ended up working just fine but it'd probably be easier to score it ahead of time so what I'm going to do um, and I think I want the arrows on the outside so I'm gonna put that side down I guess this doesn't really matter, but this is how I like to do it. I like the um, the score to go down, like to push out on the side that's going to be, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense, but this is how I do it. So score at six inches. And then at five and a half inches. And then at six and a half inches. This would probably be a lot easier if you had an actual scoreboard. Okay, so now my paper is scored. Don't fold it yet. Um, because the flatter it is when you laminate it, the less um, issues you'll have. So... On this, um, my very first version when I did it, um, I didn't realize this was going to happen. So if you see on the front cover, you can see the seam where um, one of the laminating pouches ends and the other one begins. You can see the line right there. If you look on the back, um, I don't even know if you'll be able to see it on camera. It's so subtle, but that's because of the way the laminating pouches uh, layer. So on the front, the um, 
because this is 12 inches long the laminating sheets are not going to cover the entire um the entire length of the paper on one go which is why you have to double laminate it um so um this happens because the short end uh, is underneath the beginning of the next one so i'll try and show this to you so when i take my laminating pouch if i can get it open I want to make sure that I have, so the opening is on the right side, and I have my paper. So this is how it's going to look when it's folded. I want to have the inside facing me. So inside facing me, right side up. So then I can take this, and I'm going to push it all the way up into the laminating pouch as far as it'll go. And I do try and center it as much as possible. And then you'll go ahead and laminate like that. So you see what I mean? There is some um, off hang. Now, you're going to do it like this because once this is laminated, you're going to go ahead and take your second laminating sheet. And you're going to do it the opposite way. So you're going to take this um, inside, side up right side up and then you're going to take it and shove it as far as you can in there and then you're going to laminate it again now the reason you need to do it this way in this specific order is because once it's laminated you don't want this front part to have that seam you want it to be seamless like right here it'll be better to have this seam on the back um, so you're not staring at it constantly so by doing it in this order you will end up with the seamless side on the front because this um, this seam happens because the second laminating sheet is laminating over um, the edge of this and there's kind of a ridge and it can't laminate um, right up against the ridge. I hope this is making any sense. So that's why you need to do it in that order. So I'm going to go ahead and take this second one off. And it looks like my laminator is ready. So I am going to go ahead and laminate this first part and I will be right back. Okay, so I have the first lamination portion done. So I've got this side over here. Of course, it's got about, I don't know, like half an inch of paper that's not laminated so I'm going to take it just like this just like I put it in um, and I'm going to take my second laminating sheet and I'm going to make sure that the opening this time is on the left side I'm going to take this and I'm just going to slide it right in um, push it all the way as far as you can in there and now I'm going to go ahead and laminate it again like this and I will be right back. Okay, so now it is laminated and you can see, you can, I don't even know if you can see it on camera, the seam there, there's virtually no seam because of the way that we layered the laminating sheets, but then you see the seam over here, which is going to be on the back. So now we're going to go ahead and fold this where we scored it. And since we scored it before we laminated, it is, working just nicely. Same. There we go. There's a little stiff, but it does fold on the score lines just fine. And you can totally do this after you cut it. I just kind of jumped the gun a little bit. It doesn't really matter. But now what I'm going to do is going to take my paper trimmer and I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to try to cut it so that this has the same amount of lamination border as it's got right here on these edges just so that it's nice and uniform. And I usually do that by lining up the edge of the paper with the edge of the, where the white ends right here. And that usually gives me a pretty um, even border. There we 
right. Slice, slice. There we go. Perfect. Cool. Now I got my little off cuts. And there you go. That is how it is once it is laminated and folded. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your punch. And I have mine set to 1 8 inch. And that will give you a hole that is not so big that it's going to be super noticeable once, you know, all your stringing is done. But it's big enough to allow you to pull multiple thicknesses of string through easily. So you're going to have um, a hole in each one of these creases. Now these creases are nice because they give you a guide on to where, as where to punch. Um, and I do it about... Um, about a quarter inch down from um, the edge of the paper. So it's going to be difficult for you guys to see just because like he can't see down into here but I'm going to go, go ahead and punch this and then try to show you what I did. Okay. Alright, so I feel like it's easier to see on this gray side. So, they're not perfect, but that's okay. But they are about a quarter inch from the edge of the paper, not the lamination, and they are punched right on the um, little score marks. So I'm going to do that on the top and the bottom. So, go ahead and do that over here as well. And it can be a little tricky to get them perfectly even but from a purely functional standpoint they don't need to be identical in order to be functional so that is all punched the next thing that we need to do actually no we need to punch a hole in the center um, so Again, not something that needs to be like spot on in the center, but you do want it to be on the center score line. So again, with the 1 8 inch punch, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. You can measure it if you want, but I'm an eyeballing kind of person. But if you were to measure it, it would probably be was that three and three quarters inches in? Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, okay, let's stick that over there. All right, so we've got all our holes punched. Now the next thing we're going to do is string this. So let me look through my strings and see what I want to use. I think. Hmm. I had more of these. I must have used them. Hmm. Let's see. I think on the inside I'll use the white elastic. And then I'll go ahead and use probably the blue one to do my elastic that's going to go around the whole thing. So first I'm going to string the um, elastics that are going to hold the inserts in. Now the good thing about this being the cover is that it's so sturdy and stiff that 
it's very easy to string. I find that stringing normal like fabric and leather TNs can be quite challenging to get the correct like um, to string them so that they're not too tight and not too loose. I feel like stringing these is just very simple. So go ahead and show you. So these are tight enough to hold it in, but um, not too tight to where it's going to like pinch on anything. So that's nice. Now let's see, where do I have my knot at? So I know where to start. Okay. So I am going to take this and I'm going to put it through the bottom center one. And my string is kind of short. So um, it's not going to be difficult for me to use the other end. Otherwise, um, I would suggest putting it in through this way so that by the time you get to the end, um, you can cut this off and you'll have the string like that. But I'm just going to put this through here. I'm just going to have this string. Um, this is going to be the string that I'm going to tie into a knot, so I want it a little bit longer. I'll just take it to the end of here. And then I'm going to take my other end and I'm going to, it's going to end up looking like that. So I want to take it through the outside of the next hole and I'm just going to pull that all the way through. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to take that same end and I'm going to, hmm, is this correct? Yeah. Pull through here. And I would suggest whoop, pulling it until it's, um, like you're not stretched pull it until you're not stretching the elastic but it is like flush up against the cover and then you're going to take the same end you're going to put it through the outside of the middle hole on the top and just pull that right through there you're going to go through the inside of the bottom middle hole right next to where you originally put that first string in And again, pull it until it's flush up against the um, cover, but not like stretching the actual elastic. And then you're going to go through the outside of the next bottom hole. And then through the inside of the only hole without a string. And then just one more step, you take this on the outside of the center top hole. And then it should look like this with two strings that you can tie right there. And then the outside should look like that. And then you can go ahead and I like to have lots of extra just because. So I take this all the way to the bottom and I cut it so that that's how long it is. And I make sure that my elastics are um, how I want them to be. And they look fine. I don't want them to be too tight. So kind of like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie this center one off. And again, I when I pull it like this, I pull it so that it is taut but not stretching the elastic and then I just hold it down with my finger while I do the second half of the knot and then you can kind of 
ink on these strings until it's as tight as you want it. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. It's a little looser than I would have liked, but it's okay. You can kind of get it a little tighter if you pull on it really hard. There we go. That's good. Now I am going to cut off the excess. You can wait to cut off the excess until you've got your inserts in and you can make sure everything is exactly how you want it, but I'm pretty confident that this is a good, um, this, this is going to work for me. So just cut that off. And that is how you string the inside. Now, um, none of this elastic is really being pulled on. You can still still got see it's still got some give to it, which is really going to help out when you put your inserts in, um, because then it has room to kind of stretch and not pinch anything. So now we're going to do the elastic that's going to hold this hold this all together, and I'm going to be using this blue one. So all I'm going to do is take this and string it through the center and let's see, take that back. Okay, this is how I did it before. I was trying to remember how I did it. So I take this and I double it over. And then I take the looped end and I'm going to string that through the hole. Because this string is a bit thicker, this is going to make it easier to actually get through the hole than trying to stick another string through it separately. just kind of pull on that and then before tying this off I take this and I test it like that and then you can reach in to the inside and kind of tighten it until it's as tight as you want and then um, when I'm stringing this one I like to make sure that before anything is in here that it is tight enough to where it keeps it closed like that keeps the edges together but not so tight that again the elastic is being um, pulled on too tightly because I still once I put things in here I want it to still have um, a good amount of give so I'm just gonna go ahead and see, cut this end off and then I'm going to go ahead and just take both of these together like this and tie a knot. And then before I tighten it, I'm going to make sure that this didn't move around too much and it's still how I want it. Yep. And I'm just going to go ahead and tighten that as tight as I can get it. And then I'll go ahead and cut off the excess. I know some people cut their elastics like right up against the knot. I, don't, I just don't like doing that. Um, but you can if you want to. So then that elastic goes on just like that. Easy peasy. And that's... That's it. That's all it takes. It's done. We're done, you guys. Alright. So, let's get rid of my little cutoffs. And there you have yourself a fully functioning B6TN. And, I mean, essentially you could use this same um, process with any other size, really. Uh, I don't see why you couldn't. Um, the reason I wanted to do a B6 is because I hadn't seen anybody um, do it in one solid 12 by 12 piece. Uh, one last thing that I do like to do with my, uh, well, anything that I laminate really is that 
the lamination can kind of cause a really sharp point there so I kind of just take my scissors and I just manually round the edges that way I'm not stabbing myself constantly and it's um, small enough of a rounding that it's not like too visu visually distracting because I don't have the actual paper edges rounded but it's enough so that it's not going to be hurting me all right so there's the inside of RTN there is the outside and that is it all closed up and then once it is filled up look a little something like that I seriously seriously love this tea and covers are so so ridiculously expensive and I feel like this is honestly probably like I don't know I, I just like I like this because it's so inexpensive to do and it's you know you get to do it yourself so it's fun and it's laminated so you can clean it off very very easily um I didn't do it here but I was also experimenting with the idea of using the um, offcut of the 12 by 12 to make pockets for the TN um I'm not exactly sure how that would work but I think it would be pretty cool so if that's I can figure that out and do another video on that if you guys are interested just let me know in the comments down below if you if you would be interested in seeing something like that um, but yeah so that is the end of this tutorial I hope you guys enjoyed it if you guys end up trying this out go ahead and post pictures to Instagram and tag me in them I would love to see um, so yeah this was fun. I hope this all made sense to you guys because I know that I'm really bad at explaining things and explaining what I'm doing most of the time. So doing tutorials is a good challenge for me. So I hope that this all made sense. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that this video was um, helpful in some way for you. Um, go ahead and leave me comments down below letting me know what you think of this. Um, this technique if you're gonna try it if you have tried it before um, just you know talk to me let's have a conversation uh, and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video bye all right so one more thing real quick I almost forgot to mention um, I will be making these to sell in my Etsy shop um, in case you don't have all of the supplies um, that I mentioned in this video or um, you just don't have the time to make them or you like the patterns of paper that I use or for whatever reason um, in the next uh, couple weeks I will be uh, starting to list some of these on my Etsy shop and I haven't come up with an exact price yet I'm gonna have to figure it out but it's they're definitely going to be under ten dollars probably somewhere between five and ten dollars so they'll be very very affordable and like I said because they are laminated and especially because they're double laminated they are very durable um, and easy to clean and everything so I just wanted to go ahead and mention that uh, and yeah I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you later bye <laughs>